Hello everyone, Cynthia Tomain here with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining our presentation today on implementing algo trading coded in Python using the Interactive Broker Application Programming Interface. Now, um, before we do get started today, we've got quite a lineup for you. I do want to introduce a couple of colleagues. Um, first of all, Stephen Jay, who is with our API team. Stephen is terrific, and if you do have any questions, please, uh, or any of our API questions, please address those to Stephen. Also, Ankit Shah has joined us from our Mumbai office. So if you've got questions on trading with interactive brokers, Ankit will be able to help you with those. So let me bring Ankit in uh, to today's session. Ankit, if you can, I'm going to put this over on your slides. Ankit will give us a brief introduction to trading with interactive brokers. Thanks for joining us, Ankit. And let me go ahead and pass you the ball, and we'll get underway. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, great. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, as I'm sure that you are from different parts of the world. Let me start by thanking all of you for attending today's webinar. My name is Ankit Shah, and I will be giving you a quick introduction to Interactive Brokers our offering, and why we believe that we are the best broker that fulfills your needs as a trader or investor. After I finish, I will pass the presentation on to Dr. Hui and Quantinsky, who will be presenting on implementing algo trading coded in Python using the Interactive Brokers API. So now, a quick introduction to who we are. The IB Group was founded over 39 years ago and have and has grown today to become one of the largest independent broker dealers in the world. IB Group has offices all over the world from the US to Hong Kong, Japan, Europe, Australia, India, and more. IB Group affiliates are regulated by the Securities Exchange Commission, FINRA, the NYSE, and the Financial Conduct Authority. In addition, we are regulated by many other regulators around the world. IB Group affiliates execute nearly 1 million trades per day. We have over 900 employees, and our mission remains unchanged. That is, to create technology that can provide liquidity on better terms, compete on price, speed, size, and diversity of global products and advanced trading tools. So continuing a little bit on our introduction, we currently have over $5 billion in equity capital and are rated triple B plus by S&P with a stable outlook. We have consistently reported positive earnings for 20 consecutive years. We follow a conservative risk approach. We have a real-time margin system that checks your account to see whether you're fulfilling margin requirements. We do not hold CDOs, MBSs, or CDSs. Over 84% of the company is still owned by our employees and affiliates. So what do we do? We are a global brokerage firm that offers access to over 100 market centers across 24 countries that enables you to trade stocks, options, futures, FX, bonds, ETFs, and more worldwide. You can trade on North American, European, Japanese, Hong Kong, Australian, and other markets around the world. To know more, you can go to our website and look under trading and then exchange listings. What's unique about our offering in addition to the strength and security and the global markets offered? We have created a trading platform designed by a dedicated team of programmers that has many advanced trading tools and allows you to place over 60 different order types and run algorithms such as the scale trader and the accumulate distribute al algorithm. Our risk management is sophisticated and we have real-time monitoring. Our backend system provides comprehensive reporting, including portfolio analysts that lets you quickly and efficiently analyze the performance of your account portfolio by creating and saving PDF reports suitable even for presentations. We have three different uh, trading platforms. Um, we have the Web Trader, which is an HTML-based trading platform and is the perfect solution if you prefer an uncluttered, easy-to-learn trading interface, but still want to use advanced trading features and tools. Then we have the Trader Workstation, or the TWS, which is a desktop-based software that lets you trade with many tools and features such as the chart trader, integrated stock window, 
combo trader, basket trader, and more. Finally, we have the mobile trader that allows you to trade on the go from just about any iOS and Android mobile device. Next, we offer API and fix CTCI solutions that let you build your own trading applications, get market data and chart data, and view your IB account data using the technology that's right for you. Our technologies complement each other to let you create the trading solution that best meets your need. You can code in Java, .NET, or C Sharp, Python, C++, or use Excel Visual Basic and run automated trading with interactive brokers. You can use IB's proprietary application program interface to build your own automated rules based trading application in your favorite programming language or protocol. A proprietary fixed CTCI solution lets you create your own trading system that takes advantage of our high-speed order routing and broad market depth. The WT Web API allows institutions to add market data and chart data to your custom trading interface or website. So what else is unique about our offering? Our brokerage rates. We charge half a US cent per share with a minimum of one US dollar per order for US equities. For US options, we start at 70 cents per contract and for Asian equities, we charge eight basis points of the trade value. These are some examples. You can always look at our commission rates for other products around the world from our website under pricing, and then you can click on commissions. Additional notes, lower rates are available for high volume traders under IB steered commission structure. This is available on our website under pricing, commissions, and then you can choose the product and then select tiered. For US futures, please note that commissions for Globex E-mini FX futures is 50 cents per contract and Globex E-micro FX futures is 15 cents per contract. We have won a few awards. Barron's has rated IB as a top online broker with four and a half stars for 2016. WSL has rated IB the best options trading platform and HFM US Hedge Fund Services Award has been given to IB as the best prime, prime broker for startups. For more information, you can see ibkr.com slash awards. Now, that brings me to an end of my presentation. My contact details are available on your screen. You can feel free to reach me if you have any questions. Next, we have Mr. Nitesh Khandelwal, who is one of the founders of iRage Capital, a high-frequency trading firm, and Quant Insti as well. He has experience in bank treasury and managing a proprietary trading desk. He graduated from IIT Kanpur and did his post-graduation from IIM Lucknow. Over to you, Nitesh. Dr. Hui Liu for taking this session on exciting topic of uh, trading with interactive brokers using Python. Um, so I thought that um, uh, instead of presentation, it would be a good idea to actually take you through a quick uh, round of introduction to Quan uh, on what we do and uh, uh, who we are um, and how we are adding value to the algorithmic trading space um, uh, through various initiatives. So Quan uh, uh, was founded by the working professionals who are um, avid HFT traders themselves and um, uh, who have a very keen interest and passion towards uh, algorithmic trading education uh, as well. So uh, we were founded in 2009. 2009-2010, and uh, since then we uh, have been leading this program, which is called Executive Program in Algorithmic Trading. So this is a program which is uh, focused on um, the comprehensive overview of algorithmic trading, uh, which includes various toolkits like uh, related to statistical and econometrics um, uh, concepts, as well as uh, quantitative trading, different quantitative trading strategy paradigms, and financial computing and technology, which includes your R, Python, MATLAB, and other languages too. And we also cover various CTPs, uh, which includes like uh, interactive brokers um, uh, module two, in which um, uh, you can you learn how to code strategies on interactive brokers platform and um, use them uh, in an automated fashion. So we have a um, um, advisory board with Dr. E.B. Chan and Dr. Gautam Mitra, both renowned faces in the in the world of algorithmic trading, uh, with Dr. E.B. Chan also being one of our faculties. Uh, we also have, like, uh, EPAT has been taken up by 
people from like all across the globe. Uh, we have seen participation from more than 30 countries in the past few years ac across all the six inhabited continents. And just like our uh, participants, we also have a global pool of faculty with uh, faculty coming in from US, Canada, Europe, um, India, Singapore, and other, uh, other regions. And we have also been very, uh, like this is one of the webinar sessions which, uh, which we have conducted, but there are a lot of other um, programs, uh, training programs and workshops that we conduct all across the globe. Uh, so to reach out to more people and make them aware about algorithmic trading. So uh, some of them includes like the ones which was uh, taken up by uh, Rajiv and uh, one of our faculties, Rajiv and Fitch Learning, uh, conducted by Fitch Learning in London, um, or me and Rajiv in um, uh, Bursa, hosted by Bursa Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur um, Palm Oil Conference 2015 or uh, the one, the session where we were invited to uh, address the whole uh, member, all the members of uh, um, of Thailand Stock Exchange, Stock Exchange of Thailand uh, in Bangkok, as well as a trading show in Terrebon, Chicago. A lot of other ones we have participated in more, probably more than uh, uh, 40 to 50 uh, such events in the past um, uh, in the past few years. And uh, this is our uh, our. Um, uh, coverage that we have done in India also, where we have uh, done events at various conferences, as well as hosted events uh, with industry leaders, as well as um, uh, the educational institutions and financial institutions, including the leading exchanges. So uh, that's uh, the executive program in algorithmic trading, where we also have a complete set of, uh, a complete set of um, uh, services, associated services, so which you can see probably on the EPAC page on our website, uh, so which is a six-month long duration with four months of classroom contact and two months of project work. This is the one of the pioneering programs uh, which is focused on algorithmic trading in the in the uh, Asia Pacific uh, region and uh, it's targeted towards working professionals who want to learn about more about the algorithmic trading domain through the practitioners and in a learning by doing more uh, Mode of uh, mode of way methodology, right? So that's why the online and the delivery is online. So which means that anyone can um, attend these classes from anywhere in the globe, and uh, it's a certification program. And these are the different modules where you can find all the information about um, what are the different modules that are covered in algorithmic trading, and. Um, um, this is like uh, it's uh, in the final module just being the project and the final examination, which is done before the certification uh, certification program. And our faculty, uh, like faculty, as I said, that they are mostly practitioners with like Rajiv, Dr. A.P. Chan, Sharia, Dr. Eve Hilpesh, um, me, um, Abhishek, and all these guys, and Dr. Hui Liu, so who is also the presenter for uh, today's webinar, and uh, he takes up the sessions on um, the interactive brokers related sessions and executive program on algorithmic trading. So, uh, so, so yeah. So that's um, uh, that's about EPAT, and uh, the next batch starts on uh, uh, 12th of November. So, so we have batches starting every quarter. So, so um, approximately every every quarter. So, so that's um, uh, so people can join in as per their convenience whenever they have the bandwidth and the, uh, they are ready for the commitment. So, uh, I'll probably from here uh, pass it on to uh, Dr. Hui Liu, so who is the author of iBridge Pi and uh, an open source software to trade with interactive brokers. He is also the founder for Running River Investment LLC. Uh, Dr. Hui's major trading interests are U.S. equities and forex market. Uh, Running River and Investment LLC is a private hedge fund specialized in the development of automated trading strategies using Python. Hui is the author of iBridge Pi, a famous Python trading platform that allows traders to implement their trading strategies quickly. Dr. Hui Liu has op uh, obtained his bachelor degrees and, uh, degree and master degree in material science and engineering from Tsinghua University. Uh, China and PhD from University of Virginia, United States, uh, States of America. His MBA was from Indiana University, USA, and his study interest at uh, Indiana was quantitative analysis. So, um, so I would again thank um, uh, Interactive Brokers and Dr. Hui Liu for um, hosting and taking this um, uh, take this session. And um, uh, I would request Cynthia to pass on the uh, pass on the ball to Dr. Hui Liu to take the session forward. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Can, I, can everybody hear me well? Uh, I try to slow down. Actually, my name is Hui Liu, and uh, I would like to thank you all of you for taking the time to participate in this webinar. In this webinar, I will talk about trading with interactive brokers using Python. Actually, I will talk about a Python package called Hybrid Pi.
Uh, I'm the author of I Breathe Pi. In a very, in a very short introduction, I Breathe Pi is a flexible and easy to use Python tool to trade with the interactive broker. If you have any questions about iBridgePi, you are welcome to drop me an email at iBridgePi at gmail.com, and I will try my best to answer your questions as soon as possible. If you happen to visit San Jose, California, United States, I'm glad to meet you somewhere and show you around the Bay Area. Here's the agenda of the presentation today. First, I would like to talk about the advantages of uh, interactive broker and uh, using Python to do trading based on my personal experience. Then I will focus on the features of Hybrid Pi. It includes installation of Hybrid Pi, connect Hybrid Pi to IB, Python XY and Spider IDE, which is the Python environment I recommend to run Hybrid Pi and do real trading, real real time trading. Then I will talk about three cornerstones of Hybrid Pi. They are requesting real time calls, requesting historical data, and placing different kind of orders. For example, market orders, limit orders, and stop orders. Um, and then I will give an example trading strategy of a mo moving average crossover. At the end, I will introduce two special features. First one is managing multiple accounts. For example, as a fund manager, you may want to copy orders into a different account that you are managing. The second special feature is to backtest your strategies. Okay, uh, let's start from the advantages of uh, IB. You may find a detailed introduction from IB's website. Here I list some highlights of IB purely based on my personal experience. The top one is IB has a super powerful API so that we, can, we are able to do automated trading, even high frequency trading at IB. That's the main focus of this website. The next one is low trading cost compared to other major brokers. You may find a detailed pricing structure at IB's website and figure out that it's very competitive. The third one is that you can trade over 100 market centers in 24 countries at IB. The first one, IB offers a variety of products, for example, stock, options, futures, forex, and so on. You can easily trade all of them using Hybrid Pi to realize your smart trading strategies. Why do I like Python to do trading? There are three reasons for myself. The beauty of Python, especially to beginners, is very easy to learn Python compared to Java and C++. If you just read some introduction books of Python and then you can grab the basics of Python and then complete your trading strategies quickly. Second, there are lots of very useful and powerful Python modules. You can download them and use them in a few minutes. Third, Python is an open source software. You can read through the code and understand every detail behind the scenes. It's time to talk about the hybrid path. If you are looking for a simple tool to trade with IB API using Python, or if you want to break through the limits set by Quantopian, hybrid Pi is uh, the best tool for you. Uh, you may have heard of IB Pi, uh, which is a third party implementation of IB's API. However, IB does not officially support it. Compared to IB Pi, Average Pi does not implement, re-implement IB's API, but it makes a wrapper around IB's C++ API so that Python can call the C++ API directly. Because IB's C++ API is officially maintained by IB, 
is unlikely to have unexpected program error and will be upgraded whenever IB has a new release of its trading system. There are three major considerations when I initiated iBridge Pi a few years ago. The top one is flexible. I have used Quantopian for a long time, but I figured out that Quantopian is not that flexible. For example, you can only trade US stocks on Quantopian, and the base time frequency is about one minute. If you want to trade options, futures, or forex, you are out of luck on Quantopian. The second consideration was that I wanted to have an easy to use tool, which means that traders will only spend their energies on implementing their trading strategies instead of handling trivial things. The third consideration I had was to protect privacy. Think about, you are managing a large amount of money as a fund manager. Will you feel comfortable to give your IB credentials to a third-party website? Is it safe enough? I personally don't want to do that. That's why I developed Ibridge Pi as a standalone software. Given these three considerations, I designed iBridge Pi to have the following main features. It can be used to trade any securities or commodities offered by IB. The second one, which is attractive to fund managers, is to manage multiple accounts at the same time. The third one, if you have multiple trading strategies, Hybrid Pi can easily execute multiple trading strategies at the same time and run it on your own computer. And you have the absolute control of everything. Installation of iBridge Pi. Please visit the website of www.ibridgepi.com and you will see a tab called Download. After you log in, you will see a download link. It's a zip file and you need to download and unzip it to your local folder. You will see the following files and folders. There's no need to build or compile. You can run this Python script as long as you have a Python interpreter installed. There are many Python distributions, and uh, I recommend Python XY and Spider IDE, which I will explain in details later. The next step is to connect Average Pi to IB. You need a demo account or a real account at IB to test your algorithm. Then you can follow the instruction at the website of IB to choose either TWS, which is a standalone Windows trading system, or IB Gateway to fit your needs. There are pros and cons between these two platforms. TWS will give you much more information about the markets and interactive ways to communicate with IB. On the opposite side. There's very little information you can see from IB Gateway. You may find it out soon that TWS will automatically log off every day around 2 a.m. Eastern time. If it's a concern for your trading algorithm, you'd better use IB Gateway. Personally, I like IB Gateway because it's fast and easy to use. After you, 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 after you install IB Gateway and open it, you will see a login window like this. Okay, laser pointer here. This one, IB Gateway, okay. Uh, first, you need to check IB API here and put in your user username and password then you need to choose the trading mode, either paper trading or uh, real trading. If you choose the real trading mode, you will be prompted to input the security code based on the security card that IB provides you as an extra layer of protection. 
if you are using a demo or paper account, it's not required to do that. After you log in IB Gateway, you need to check the configuration. I lost my laser point off right here. You need to check the configurations by click Config and click Setting on the left. Then you will see API settings on the right. You need to uncheck Read Only API if you want to place order and check or uncheck other items to fit your needs. The only thing you need to pay attention is the socket port right here. If it's not 7496, it's highly recommended to change it to 7496. However, it's okay to use other port numbers if you have strong reasons to do that. Then you need to change the setup in average pack to adapt other port numbers. Uh, you need to click OK to accept the changes, then you are good to go. If you are using TWS, the first step is to click the tiny symbol wrench around here and click settings. You will see the setting windows jump out. Then first click API and on the left, click Settings. You will see API settings on the right side. You must check Enable ActiveX and the Socket Climb here on the top and verify the socket port is 7496 here. Then click OK to accept the changes. It's recommended to restart TWS to make sure the changes are effective. That's all you need to do on either TWS or IB Gateway to use every path. Next, let me explain how to set up Python environment. After you download and uh, unzip uh, the files, you can start to use Ibridge Pi as long as you have installed a Python interpreter. However, I recommend to use Python XY to work on your algorithm. Python XY is a free scientific and engineering environment software based on Python programming language. Spider is the interactive development environment, we call it IDE. You may go to uh, this website. Actually, oh, I forgot to put it there. Just uh, use Google and put Python XY, you will go to their website to download the full version of Python XY. It will take half an hour or one hour to download it, depending on your internet speed. But it's worth to do, do it at the beginning because it will install the critical Python packages like pandas, NumPy, so that you don't need to install them by yourself later. And Spider is a very good and easy to use web tool. After you install Python XY and open it, you will see a window like this. Click the symbol here to open Spider IDE to write your Python, Python code. You will, after you open Spider IDE, you will see a window like this. I prefer to arrange windows in Spider like this. You write Python code in the left window and see the execution results in the right window. You can arrange windows in Spider by click View, then Panel, and uh, then only check Editor and Console. This is a personal preference, and you don't need to do it to run average Pi. The only thing you really need to do to prepare Spider is to set up Python path. The purpose of Python path is to tell Python interpreter where you installed iBridge Pi and where the library locates. To add the folder to the Python path, you need to click Tools here, around here. Python path manager and add path like this to choose the folder where you unzip your iBridge Pi. Then click Close to accept it. 
it's preferred to restart spider IDE to make sure the Python path is effective. To run a sample code, you need to open, there's a file called run underscore me dot py in the folder of average pi, which is the entrance of average pi. Inside the IDE, you need to click file and then open, then choose the file. You will see spider show up like the following. To run the Python code, click the green triangle OF file. You will see the result uh, on the right window around here. To make average pi even more user friendly, we are working on a Windows interface. In the next generation of iBridge Pi, you don't need to write any code to see your account information, your positions, pending orders, or executed orders. You will see them directly in Windows. As you see, the left window is where you can write your Python code, and in the right window, you will see the execution results. In the lower left window, you will see the details of all the pending orders and the executed orders. In the lower right window, you will see the positions that you are holding. For example, for example here, the account has two positions. One is SPY, the other is Forex Euro to US dollar. The second column here is the volumes of the positions. The third column is the cost basis. The first column shows the net profit a lot, for example here. Okay, it's time to talk about the, the code structure. There are two built-in functions. The first one is called initialize here. It's a required setup method for initializing state or other bookkeeping. This method is called only once at the beginning of your algorithm. Handle data is also a built-in method where trading decisions are made. It's a required method that is called every second or every minute, which is specified in the run me.py. There are two variables, context and the data. Context contains the variables claimed in the function of initialize Data contains account information and near real-time calls received from IB. In this sample code, I print IB server time in a designated format like this, and then print the real-time ask price of Forex Euro to US dollar. The function of handle data will be run every second which is uh, defined in the runme.py. The function of get data time is uh, another built-in function to request the server time from IB. Okay, this page shows the results of the sample code. The first line, the first line here, tells you that your code starts to do initialization work here. Then the second then the second part is to print account balance. If the account has any positions, they will show up. In this example, there are two positions. One is SPY here, the other one is the forex USD uh, euro to USD dollar. Any other information will show up after the position are printed out. In this example, there's no open order, so there shows no open order. When the initialization completes, it tells you so, right here. Then the function of handle data will be run every second, as I explained. It prints out the server time, IB server time first, like right here. 
then the function of handle data will be uh, uh, and then will be run every second to print out uh, the ask price of uh, euro, uh, euro to USD dollars, as you see here, every second. The code will not stop until you force it to stop either. Okay, let's go back to take a closer look at the runme.py. From line 16 to line 19 here. Here are, uh, these are the file names of trading algorithm that uh, you coded in, which are, which are available. You can run one of them by commenting out others. In Python, you put a, a hash sign to comment out the code, which means that line won't be wrong by Python interpreter. In the current example, you are ready to run a Python script, which the file name is example show real time prices.py. That's the, the previous example I showed actually. In line 20, you need to tell average pi your IB account code here. Line 21, specify how often the function of handle data will be run here. 60 means to run it every minute and one means to run it every second. Of course, you may choose to run it at other frequencies but you need to learn a little bit more to control the behavior of your algorithm. Line 22, there are four levels to show results. If you put error, it only show error messages. Typical user will like to use info, which will show results of your algorithm. If you put debug there, you may know more info when you debug your algorithm. If you put not set, you will see tremendous information if you really want to know how every pair is working. So choose either of them based on your needs. Three cornerstones of every pair. I will talk about these three important features. The first one is to request the real time price. The second one is to request the historical data. Third one is to place orders. When you need a real time price, simply call a built in function of show real time price, like I showed in this example. There are two variables. The first one is the name of security. So here, uh, as an example, Forex Euro to USD dollar. Second is the type of price. You can, it can be ask price or bid price or last price. For most of US stocks and the ETF, you can simply put AAPL for Apple, the stock of Apple, instead of put a long name. Uh, I made this format like this, which is stock Apple in USD dollars. So the base currency is USD dollars. For Forex, Future options, more information is needed to specify the security. For example, if you put F U T E S U S D and uh, 201503, which means a future contract, which is a e-mini that tracks the SP 500 stock market index. The expiration date of the future is March 2015. If you want to trade the option, you need to put a long code to specify an option. For example, here, it tells an option of Apple in USD dollars as base currency. Then you need to put the expiration date, which is uh, July 2nd, 2015. The put price is $133 and the multiplier is 100. I was trying to simplify it, but to specify a future and option, there's no, there's no other shortcut to make it short. So you have to do that. If you want to trade forex, that's simple. You put a cash, euro, and USD, which means forex of euro, euro, euro to USD dollars. The next feature 
is to ask for historical data from IB. Actually, you can access all kinds of historical data from IB, but there's a limitation on how many lines of historical data, how, how many lines of historical data you may request. You may refer to IB's related web page for more information. In iBridgePy, there's a function called request the data. You may use it to request many kinds of data from IB server. To ask for historical data, you need to specify a parameter called history data, like I showed here. You may use it to request, uh, actually, if you put other, uh, uh, you, if you want to ask other information, you can still use the request data, but put another parameter here. To ask for historic, historical data, you need to specify a parameter called, okay. Okay, as an example, I want to request historical data of SPY. I want daily data and go back 50 days. So the, the first parameter I put is symbol of SPY here. The second parameter I put is one day, which means uh, I want daily data. The third parameter I put is a 50D. It means go back 50 days from today. The retrieved historical data are saved in a pandas data frame that are saved at, okay, here, at, a, at a hist an attribute of data class, actually. And the data class is saved in a dictionary, uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a dictionary type in Python. After you run this Python program, you will see the retrieved historical data, I think. The first column is the index, uh, then, then followed by close, high, low, open volume. If you want to show volume weighted average price, you need to make a minor change by yourself. As an example here, it only shows the last five lines of the historical data. Yeah. Actually, I saw somebody ask questions how to ask for uh, how to get adjusted historical data apply at IB. Uh, actually, okay, that's it. Uh, uh, okay, I, I will answer questions later. Definitely, you can uh, request the historical data from IB at other time period, at other frequencies. The request format is defined in the IB reference guide at this page. Here's the list of time period IB supports from one second to one day. Here's the format that you can, here's the format you can use to specify the go back period. S here means seconds. Day means days. W means weeks. In the previous example, I specified 50 D to go back 50 days. If you don't specify unit, the default unit is seconds. Here's an example of requesting minute data of SPY. You can see the time index has changed to minutes here. Uh, sometimes you may want to request multiple historical data at once. Here is the example of requesting historical data of SPY minimum data. Go back one day. Here, uh, go back one day. And in uh, the at same time, you may want to request historical data historical data of Apple. For example, in in daily data, but go back 10 days. It's pretty simple to do that in average time. You put symbol of SPY here, and then you put one minute and one D as the first parameter, as the, the actually the historical data is, uh, uh, in Python, the type is a list, so you need to provide the import as a list. So you put SPY as the, the first element of the list and you put the second one, symbol of AAPL, um, which is Apple, the stock of Apple. And then 
you put one day if you want to request daily data, then put a 10 D to go back 10 days. That's the request request format. To retrieve the historical data will be saved in data class, as I explained before. They are indexed by their symbol. So when you need this data, you just add a data, and then you put your, the symbol of SPI uh, to retrieve the, to, to access the historical data saved in a data frame. And the, the data is saved at the hist, which is the attribute of data. So you put dot hist, and in the hist actually is a, a, a dictionary of Python as well. And uh, it's indexed by the time frequency. For example, SQI, when you request it's one minute, then you put one minute here. For Apple, you request daily data. So you, when you request, you put one day. Then when you want to access data, you put a hist of one day here. The tail parenthesis is a built-in Python function to show only the last five lines of the pandas data frame. It's, um, you don't need to use it. It's uh, just an example to show uh, in this presentation. In this part, you will, um, the return results will very likely show something like that. You can see SPY is in minute, and the, the, the price of Apple is showed in daily data. As well, you will see um, close, high, low, open volume as you need. Uh, in your program, we, you can use this historical data, historical data directly. For example, you can add a column, calculate the moving average, and look for a moving average crossover as an entry point. For example, just use it in your program. Okay, after you calculate your formula, it's time to place orders. In you know, average pi, there's a function called order, which is the, the function to place order, actually. To place a market order, you only need to put two parameters. The first one is the security name. I put, uh, as an example, security of, of SPY. The second one is the number of shares that you want to buy. For example, to buy 100 shares of SQI, you put 100 here. And actually, if you want to sell, you put a negative number, which means you want to sell 100 shares. It's pretty simple. There's a shortcut function called order target. Uh, order target. Oh, oh order target here. Yeah. Same thing, two parameters. The first one is name of security. The, second, the meaning of the second parameter is a little bit different. Here, 100 means the average pile will adjust the positions based on how many you are holding by either sell or buy shares until you hold 100 shares. So this number is the target number. It's pretty handy. If you want to place limit orders or stop orders, you can specify them in the order function. In this example, I place a limit order to buy 100 shares of SPY at a price of $213.42 per share, like this. And as another example, I, put, uh, I, I place a stop order, the stop price is set the same same price and just and put an active, which means I want to sell uh, sell a short. When the limit price or stop price is reached, the orders will be filled at the best available price. Actually, IB supports over 60 order types and algorithms. Algorithms, you can implement them in average pipe by yourself as needed. Actually, if you need any help. You can drop me an email. After you place orders, it's highly recommended to follow up on the status of these orders 
using a function called order status monitor in average pile. For every order you place, you will receive an order ID, which is the unique identity of your order request. I can put here order ID. There are three parameters in the function of order status monitor. The first one is order ID, which tells iBridgePy which order ID you want to monitor the status. The second one is called target status. So, um, for market order, you should expect field as the ending point of your order request. But for limit or stop orders, the expected status should be submitted, which means the orders have been accepted by IB and waiting for execution. The third parameter in order, mon order status monitor is waiting time in seconds. It's used to specify how long you are willing to wait for and return order status. Typically, it won't take too long to complete the transaction for high liquidity securities. For extremely low liquidity securities, it will take a while to complete a large transaction even for a market order. You need to put a little bit thinking on it when you are working on your trading algorithm. The program will stop if it has not received the expected order status more than 30 seconds if you put 30 there. Also, it can be used as a debug tool. For example, if you place a market order that is not filled after a few seconds, you should double check your program for unexpected bugs. This page shows you what you will see after you place a market order to buy 100 shares of Forex when the log level is debugged. The log level is info. You won't see if, if the log level you said is info, you won't see some of this information in this page. In the first line, it tells you the name of Python module is hybrid Pi Trader Single Account. And the function name is order in contoping style. The action is to uh, the action is to buy a hundred shares of forex of euro to USD dollars at an unknown price. The execu ex execution price is unknown because it's a market order. You won't know it before it's settled. The order ID is sub twenty. The second line is a warning message from IB about this, about this order. It wants you 100 shares of forest is kind of strange to IB server. Maybe you need to take a closer look. That's the warning message. Third line. Third line. Third line here. Comes from order status monitor. It tells you that the order has been filled. And uh, uh, okay, here the price. You will see the the order ID of uh, 520. The settling price was 1.1196 dollars. It's not unknown anymore because the order has been filled. Then I print out account information after order is filled as euro. Uh, so here is the account balance positions and uh, other status. It tells you ID 520 is here, it's filled in at specific price. So you will know this order has been uh, has been has been filled. Okay, till now I have introduced three cornerstones of average path. 
first one is to request real-time price. Second one was to request histor historical data. The third one is to place order. With these three cornerstones, you can develop your own trading strategies already. Here, I want to show a trading strategy example. It's called a moving average crossover. The theory is to use two moving averages to look for trading opportunities. It has two moving averages. A short-term moving average is faster because it only considers price over a short period of time, and it's more reactive to daily price changes. I use five in this example. On the other hand, a long-term moving average is slower because it smooths out the prices over a longer period of time. In this example, I use 15. When the faster moving average cross over the slower moving average from bottom to top, we enter the market by placing a buy order of 100 shares. When the faster moving average cross over the slower moving average from top to bottom, we exit the market by closing the order. Here are the Python code to implement uh, the crossover strategy you can see here. In the block of uh, initial line, I define the two variables. The first line is wrong one, which is a flag to show if the handle data function has been wrong in a day. In, in a day. The second the parameter I said is security, which defines uh, security for the following part. And I put SPY here as an example. Then in the next block, which is handle data, uh, it describes the details of moving average crossover. This block will be run every minute or every second as you want. The first, the first line here, as time, is to ask for IB server time by call this function, get daily time. Then I specify that the trading will be done from Monday to Friday because the market closed on weekend. Then in this line, two minutes before the market closes at 3.58 Eastern time, reset the flag and get ready to trade. This is reset. And then one minute before the market close, it requests the historical data of XPY daily which is just right here, daily and go back 20 days to calculate moving averages, uh, uh, moving average of, one, uh, of 5 and 15. So I'll go back 20 days is long enough. Then I use pandas, pandas built-in function to calculate moving average, two lines here, rolling moving average of 5 and the rolling moving moving average is 15. If, uh, you can see here, if crossover occurs, place market order, you see here, it's a 100 positive, which means to place order. And then follow up the order status using a function of order status monitor and put order ID you get. And the, the default target, uh, target status of the order is field. Uh, when the other, on the other side, if the moving average crossover on the other side, you place a um, target order, here is zero, which means you don't want to hold any position, and then follow up using other status monitor. It should, you it should extract the, the target status of order field. Then after everything is done, you reset wrong one to true, which means Handle, handle data, the function of handle data has been wrong once, I would say. So that's it. That's the moving average crossover. It's a real uh, example. So someone asked me why place a zero share order here from the question from Mr. Lee. Uh, here, the order target is zero, which means you don't want to hold any 
positions anymore. So you put zero here. Oh, thank you. Somebody answered this question. Okay, it's time to talk about the special feature of average pass. The first one special feature is to manage multiple accounts. Think about a situation like this. You are a fund manager and you manage multiple accounts and trade for your customers. You have an excellent trading strategy. When the trading signals show up, you need to place orders in all of the accounts that you manage. And you want to minimize the differences of the execution prices in all of these accounts. How would you accomplish that? I believe I can do that for you. Following the previous example, assume that a moving average cost over triggers to buy 100 shares in account one and buy 500 shares in account two. In average pi, you can simply do that by adding a parameter in the function of order target here. 100 shares in account one, you place order target, place order, and 500 shares in account two, place order, and you assign the order ID one and order ID two. Then follow up the status of orders separately here. Then on the other side, when you want to close them, you put a zero, target zero, account one and account two, and then follow up the status. In this way, in this way, uh, you can place orders in multiple accounts. You can put as many lines as you want here to manage your account. Oh, somebody talked about uh, uh, wrong background script to connect iBridge Pi, uh, to connect to an ID server, one account per connection. There's a limit. Uh, you can run, I remember it's a five. It's the limit you can connect to to ID gateway. And uh, actually when you handle that, you need to open a lot of ID, ID gateway or TWS. It's not that convenient and it's not that efficient. It, it, especially when you want to share some information, as in this example, one si because one signal will trigger transactions in all accounts. So the trigger part should be used one function, should be used one Python, uh, Python code. And the place order should be also integrated together. That's a much simpler way to manage multiple accounts actually. But it's okay to use multiple connections. It's just not that easy, actually. If you really handle multiple accounts, you will you will know that if you if you have done that. Okay. Uh, the second special feature of average pie here is to backtest strategies. If you followed my explanation of average pie, you may have figured out that average pie is a good Python tool for real time trading. How about the backtest? How can you debug your strategy? It's a really, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really a good, good question, actually. Don't worry, you can run average pi in test mode. In test mode, average pi will download daily data from Yahoo Finance because someone may not access historical data from IB after you installed average pi. So I decide to download data from Yahoo Finance first. Then average pi will simulate IB servers to process market orders. In this way, you can backtest your strategies as long as you provide good historical data instead of Yahoo Finance data. When you are working on a complicated trading algorithm, the test mode will be very helpful to debug your code. So when you want to run uh, backtest, uh, you and uh, you need to put some information here, for example, start time and end time. These two parameters tell average pi to download historical data from Yahoo Finance. This is the starting time, this end time. I assume this is the, the time period that you will need to use to simulate your, to do the back test, but then you turn change it to test mode. 
and run it, you will see the, uh, the result. Uh, as if IB server is processing your market order. Okay, that's the end. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, you're welcome to drop me email. My email is ibridgepi at gmail.com. The download link is www.ibridgepi.com. Thank you. Uh, I will answer some questions after a while after I check out the, the real-time chat window. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. And while um, and right now, what I would like everyone to do is take. Um, if you do have a question for Dr. Liu, please add that to your chat panel now. We've had extensive um, back and forth throughout today's presentation, so it'll be much easier to get your question answered if you go ahead and put it in the chat panel. Now, also, um, I do have a polling question that um, I'm going to run as well. It's a short poll and multiple choice questions. So I do ask, notice I'm going to open it up on your screen right now, and you'll, um, <clears throat> with just four questions, please make your selection. And then notice in the lower left-hand corner of the screen if you would submit that once you have completed. Now remember, um, you can close that polling panel once you've finished by using the X that's included in the title bar. Also, notice that the chat panel collapsed as soon as I opened up the poll. But once you've finished and you've uh, submitted that poll, and it is a um, let me see, we have about a half a minute left to go, so please finish up. As you have finished, notice the chat panel is actually red um, just above where the polling panel exists. If you use the X that's included in the polling uh, panel title bar, it will collapse that poll down. Also, simply double-click the chat panel to send those questions now. Um, <clears throat> so thanks, everyone. Appreciate the feedback here. And um, we'll also do want to let you know, I have Stephen, who is with the a um, IB API team, who will also jump in in just a moment and show you where to access our API documentation. Poll is about to end in 10 seconds, so please, everyone, finish up now, and we'll be able to see those results. Thanks very much. Hello, everyone. This is Stephen from API. Um, think dear or Dr. Liu, can you pass me the ball so I can uh, do a quick presentation walking through the basic stuff about, about IB API? Okay, Stephen, um, poll just closed, and I'll pass it to you in just a second. I'm compiling those poll results, and so uh, if you can hold on for four seconds, I'll pass it to you in just a moment. Sure. Okay, here we go. All right, Stephen, um, you've got control now. Would you take us out to the IB website? Thank you. Um, so uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to the event, and thank you, Dr. Liu, for the uh, awesome material covering the presentation. And I'm just going to do a very quick walkthrough uh, for those of you who are interested in the official IB API that we support. So I'm going to share my screen very quickly. So actually, the IB API is a purely open source um, API. So all the information is available on the IB website directly. You just need to go to www.interactivebrokers.com, and then you can just need to click on Trading at the top menu bar navigate to API solutions on the left, and then uh, you want to click on, uh, scroll down a little bit more and then click on the button saying learn more about IB API. This will actually direct you to the API main page from Interactive Brokers website. And from this page, you will actually see a brief introduction about different programming languages that we directly support. So um, to answer one of the questions before, Unfortunately, we don't currently support an official Python API, but after the presentation from Dr. Liu, I think you guys have a great option for third party. So, um, and if you want to download the official IB API components, you just need to scroll down more and then click on the link saying Get API Software. Once you click on that link, you will be prompted with the non-commercial license. So for for those clients who are trying to build a trading platform for commercial, uh, for commercial need, you probably need to uh, read non-commercial license and then make sure you agree with the license. 
once you get to the next step, and you will be able to download the IB API either for Windows or for a Mac or Unix system. And uh, another thing I want to show you is how to get the uh, how to get to the official documentation for API. So at the very bottom of the API main page, you will see additional resources. Just need to click on guides. And I would definitely recommend you to read through the API GitHub guide for 9.72 version because we just actually uh, moved all the documentation on GitHub and actually uh, all the API functionalities on the GitHub uh, API guide is going to be uh, categorizing into different sections. And for example, um, like previous questions like how to get market data for a specific types, you just need to uh, navigate to market data section. And then if you want to get top market data level one data, just click on that. And then if you, uh, you can just, let me show you this quickly. So if you, uh, once you get to the top market data level one section, you will see um, request the uh, documentation for requesting data as well as receiving the data. And then you will actually see some sample codes to help you better understand how, how those functionalities work. And at the very top, you are actually able to easily switch between different programming languages, and so you will see different sample codes. So I think we can, um, I'm just going to stop sharing my desktop, and we can move to the QA session. So think here, if you can just take the ball, we can move to the QA session to answer all the questions. Okay, well thank you very much, Stephen. And what I am going to do is pass the ball back over to Dr. Liu uh, to handle any questions. Now remember, if your chat panel did collapse, to please um, simply double click the chat title bar and it will expand where you can send any additional questions or comments for our presentation here today, uh, or to any of our presenters, I should say. Okay. Okay, thank uh, you. Great. Back to thank you, you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I have received a lot of questions in the chat in the chat window. Uh, I was not able to go through all of them. I picked some of them to answer your questions. Actually, if you have any more questions, you are welcome to send me an email at ibridgepi at gmail.com. I will try my best to answer your questions as soon as possible. So I picked some questions. The first question someone asked is, Pi support Python 3.4? My answer is no. Right now, uh, it only supports um, Python, Python 2 right now. But actually, if I see a lot of needs to support Python 3.4 or any other 3.5 or other variations, I will try to do that. But it depends on needs. The second question, someone asked if C++ compiler is needed to run Ibrid Pi. The answer is no. The only thing you need to run Python is Python interpreter. You don't need to, need to install C++. However, someone tried to uh, install Ibrid Pi on Windows 10, and he had some problem to use uh, the hybrid Pi C++ wrapper. Finally, uh, he got me back said he fixed the problem by install Visual Studio 2 into his uh, Windows 10 machine. But uh, it just happened, happened once. I'm not sure if that helps you. But uh, if you do have some problem uh, at at my website, there's a forum. You can post those questions or send me an email. I will try my best to figure it out. But however, I don't have Windows 10, so I need, uh, I, I need somebody to help me to, to debug. If, 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 if you really find the, the solution, please post it on the, the forum so other people will be benefit from it. Another question someone asked, when you ask uh, when you request information from IB server, is that ask price only? My answer is no. You can request a lot of information from IB, including price, volumes, and others. For example, you can ask for 
security information. For example, you want to know what's the option of Apple stock. Uh, what's the strike time? Uh, no, what's the expiration expir, exp, expiration dates of all options of Apple, and what are the strike prices of Apple right now? And what are the prices? What are the prices? You can do that actually. Use average price. Use request the data to average and put in other parameters. You can. You will have capability to ask all kinds of information as long as IB provides that. But some uh, not common requests to iBridge Pi, I have not coded yet. If you do have some special needs, like some special things I have not experienced, you are welcome to drop me an email. I can help you to develop that feature actually. Some some people ask, where are the documentations of average pi? I'm working on that. You will see gradually, I will post them on my website. So you're welcome to check www.averagepi.com. There is a, a tab under download. You will see average pi documentation. And uh, yeah, that's the question I tried my best to answer. And if you have more questions, you're welcome to send me an email. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Liu, for today's presentation. I'd also like to give a good deal of thanks to Quant Insti for bringing us today's event. Um, it's been very helpful, and they've been terrific people to work with. Um, I do want to let you know I've seen several different questions that have come into the chat about how to access today's slides. So be aware as you exit our event, and you can do that using the X in the upper right hand corner, but that will give you access. You'll find in a separate browser window a link to today's notes. You can actually bookmark that browser or that page or simply print from there. By the way, both the recording and the webinar notes um, <clears throat> will be available on the Interactive Broker website. There's an education menu, uh, drill down to the webinar section, and the recordings, and you'll be able to find both the recorded playback as well as the webinar notes for today's event. Also, I do have one additional poll that I'm going to open up for you now. Before you do exit, I ask that you answer these few short questions. Um, this IB's team or management team does require I run this in each event, so your feedback here is uh, very appreciated. Notice that there are uh, three or <clears throat> two different. Uh, multiple choice questions, and make sure that after you make your selection, you do hit the Submit button. Now, if you do have additional um, comments or suggestions on any of our webinars or other topics you'd like to hear more about, I ask that you send those to me at webinars at interactivebrokers.com. Poll's about to end, everyone, so please click that Submit button now. It will be very helpful. Thank you all. Now, um, <clears throat> by the way, I do want to uh, mention uh, we do have a new features poll that's available on the Interactive Broker website. I saw a lot of suggestions coming through, and if you do want to communicate directly with our development team, go to the, or enter your suggestions in that new features poll. Uh, that way they'll be able to see, follow, and uh, respond to any of your requests. So with that, I'm <clears throat> Thank you all. By the way, poll did end, so I really do appreciate it. Now, if um, today's event, that's going to conclude our event for today, and be on the lookout as you exit for the slides from today's presentation. I'll also be sending you a direct link to today's recorded playback so you can come back and review any of the concepts that any of our presenters discussed today. So with that, I want to thank all of you for your participation with us. Have a great day, everyone, and please all do remember to trade smart. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your interest here with us today.